So this is the first episode of the Lurge series. I'm going to guide you through how I designed uh, all the needed parts to fit it in the NF3 machine. Hello YouTube. As you've seen, I'm in a different location than usual. Um, I've decided to run away from the scorching heat of the Italian city and uh, come up uh, here in the hills, a uh, very relaxing place. And I've decided to go through uh, my design. So you will see in this video how I designed the end of three enclosures and all the needed parts to fit in the large uh, board. I hope you enjoy it. So we start by heading to GitHub. There's a link for Creality 3D printing. And the end of three is a fully open source machine. So you get to this uh, GitHub page and then you can go into Mechanico. And here is different formats to get the downloads. I'm going to use the STP. So you go to STP and then you click on the main ASM and the three STP. And unfortunately, there's no way to download this very easily. So, or at least maybe there is, but I don't know how. So what I do is I cl right click here, I download the file. And what I get is this download file here, which has a .txt name on it. So you go ahead and you change that. So as you see, this is the file text. So you click on it, you remove txt, and you change the extension to step, and uh, that will work with uh, Fusion 316. So I already uploaded it to Fusion, and this is how it looks like. So here we have our Hender 3 machine. Nice and easy with all the features, and it's pretty well done, and uh, it is quite well representative. So what I have done, I have created another file, which is called Adder, which is the name of my printer, which is actually how my printer looks like in real life. So some of the additions you see here, for example, my stepper motor dampers, link in the description, and also with the bracket for the for the inductive switch. Plus, I have also changed the position of uh, of the spool holder because uh, my my printer is inside a cabinet, which is not tall enough to fit this one. So uh, this is how I have uh, designed the modification. So you start seeing here that the box is a bit different and you also have the display on this side. The reason why I decided to put the display on this side is since I have the spool holder on the side that is taking room anyway, so I said I thought it was better to kind of uh, reduce the uh, bounding box of the printer by removing everything. And now we go into the uh, juicy part of the new design. So you can see that there are plenty of uh, features in the tree. So we take away everything that is not needed. So this is the modification and the modified parts you need to print. Except for this one, which is the original uh, sheet metal cover of the uh, of the box. So I decided to save it since, you know, trying to uh, reuse as much as I could. So it all goes down to the screen box, the box for the electronics and the box for the hotbed uh, switch. So, if you go uh, in on the internet, you go on the large website, you can get uh, the dimensions of the boards or you can take them out with, with a gauge yourself. So, the first thing I did is to redesign the screen and the board itself. So, trying to identify everything that could be um, an obstacle and everything that should fit in the enclosure. So the way I did it, if I roll back the history here in Fusion, so I've created a base sketch with the dimensions and then I have imported as a canvas and you can do it just by clicking insert canvas and then you browse for the picture. It's a picture of the uh, large uh, display um, drawing where you have all the drawings and everything. So what you do is you scale it to size to make sure that the dimensions overall match. 
And then you go on with your design, making sure that it will match in the end and it will make sense. This is also useful for everything that has no dimension in the, in the drawing. And then you can turn it off when you're finished. I did exactly the same thing with the main board. So if I roll it back here, you will see the sketches. So I made a sketch and then I kind of overlapped it to the sketch. And then I went on designing all the components to fit in the right place. For example, you can see that there is no dimensions here for the connector of the screen. So I had to kind of guess what it was sitting uh, using this technique. Very handy. It's also useful if you look here. It's also useful because you can kind of 3D design anything that was uh, on a 2D drawing. So this is how I did it. So now let me close this one and this one as well. And if we go back here, I'm going to hide this just for your convenience. So it's inside the contour box. I take away the sheet metal. So I have decided to put the board upside down. Uh, so I have designed this K-shaped bracket to fit it to the, um, the sheet metal enclosure. So you will see that uh, they match, the holes match the support holes for the fan, which I have removed and replaced this plug, and also one of these side holes. So I have decided to put a plug on the fan because I want to put vents on the sides and the bottom because this is not going to sit on the floor. I mean, it sits a bit uh, higher up because of the, the, the machine has some, some feet. And you see here why I needed to design the board properly, because I had to fit the right slots in the right place. I also decided to try to use as much as I could the existing features or... Uh, so this actually slides into the T-slot of the Y-axis. And these two bolts just bolt into the main uh, uh, frame. So, as we said, it's upside down. And there is also this uh, cover on the bottom that I'm also going to take away for a second. Just to show that it is fully accessible from the bottom, which is what I wanted to get. So having it fully accessible uh, so that I didn't need to uh, disassemble the box uh, to get it there. And also the space for the fan. This is the stock fan from the enclosure. So I got it from the enclosure and I decided to put it down there. A bit more on the design. So if you take the main box, which is interesting because uh, it has a lot of features. So I tried to design it for 3D printing. And a few highlights for this. So these ones, for example, these are the holders for the nuts with which I'm going to connect the top, uh, the top uh, sheet metal. And uh, you see that they are hanging from the bottom at an angle, so they don't need any support. And the same goes for the holes. I reinforced the holes with this uh, protrusion and I have decided to not make it round so that it doesn't need support as well. The only uh, need for supporting this design that I could not avoid is the T-shape here, which is fine. It, it works with bridges in my printer, at least. I didn't have uh, a need to do this. And this also, the small holes here, they don't need support. Uh, I have also put some ribs behind to make sure that uh, they kind of are a bit more stiff. And this is it. So that's the basic principles. Um, I can go a bit more into the details. Um, top vent, plug, and then there is this uh, bracket here that is uh, supporting the, the board. And then there is the board itself and the lower lid. The lower lid is just uh, locking in place with this lip here and it just uh, it's connected without the need of any screw. Same goes for the box uh, for the uh, power switch of the um, of the bed, which is a separate board. So if I open this one up, just to go a bit more into details as well. So if I take away the cover and also the outer box, this is as well the power supply. So I have um, designed it. Uh, this has been just. Uh, 
derived from uh, from the existing part because I have to measure it out. I didn't kind of, I couldn't find any uh, drawing of this, and you see it's very sketched. I mean, this is the snowflake uh, heat sink. I don't care about uh, the actual design, and also these are the connection ports. I don't care about that as well. And here below, I just drew a box where the pins are sticking out. Uh, you want to make sure that there is room for the pins that go through because there's through pins for the high power. Uh, connections there and then I designed a box around it with a couple of holes to fix it to the railing and this snap links so I wanted to do it as, as well without any screws so I have designed this so that it snaps into place and on the top here connection for the fan three holes and this one is also because I also need to, to put in the cable somewhere and finally, these two ports to get the cables through. And so, this is how it looks like in the end, with the fan attached and the two uh, T-nuts connecting it there. The final one is the screen itself. Pretty easy as well. Um, to design is, is three parts. As soon as you have the, uh, the board, you can easily identify where the, where the holes sit. So I just uh, copy pasted the old position and it's going to be fitted with uh, through holes. So I'm going to thread the front housing. So there are this uh, threaded, uh, or actually this uh, unthreaded uh, holes here that I will I will tap with uh, with the tap. I didn't find, I didn't, I couldn't think of any better way to avoid that. Not something I like in uh, designing with uh, 3D printing, but uh, couldn't really think of a clever way to go without that. And having it flush on the front, I could have done through holes and just put nuts here, but just it's not aesthetically pleasing to me. Finally, this slot here for the ribbon cable to connect it to the board. And this is it. So that's a bit of a glimpse of uh, how I designed uh, the old thing. And uh, it looks pretty neat to me. So I like uh, the way it turned out uh, in the CAD at least. Now we will see. I have printed all the parts. So next video I will go through the complete assembly and rewiring of the machine. I was uh, just uh, waiting to make sure that all my printing is complete because as soon as I'm going to take away the the board from uh, the, the end of three, then uh, I don't have a spare machine to, to do more printing. So I will have I, I don't have uh, room for mistakes here. I hope you enjoyed uh, this uh, outdoor session and I hope that the noise coming from the background is uh, not too uh, annoying. And uh, yeah, I think that is it for now. And Till next time. So this concludes my outdoor filming experience. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you find it useful. Uh, you maybe got some hints uh, on how to design for 3D printing. You're welcome to ask questions in the comments. And if you like what you see, please subscribe. Uh, the Lurge uh, series will go on. I have, uh, of course, uh, more coming up. And uh, you will also get uh, the link to my Twitter channel. Feel free to... Um, subscribe to that as well and until next time